What's up, what's up? It's time for Done Way Past Funny. With your host, G.D. Fenderson. Join us as we take a look back at the early works of seasoned comedians before they were seasoned with this week's guest, Frankie James. It's time to get down and get dope with Done Way Past Funny. Hi, I'm your host, G.D. Fenderson, certified forensic humorist at large, but I'm losing <laughs> weight. Uh, welcome to Done Way Past Funny where we look at the early works of seasoned comedians before they were seasoned. Uh, my guest for this episode is actor, comedian, Frankie Jane. Hello. Hey, how's Steve? it going? What's up, my boy? Hey, it is it is so good to see you not in the flesh. No, I'm just teasing. <laughs> <'Cause>, <laughs> everybody. <laughs> yeah, because most of with the COVID, everybody's been like, I've, I've only seen them in Zoom. I've only seen them in Zoom. Yeah. And now, but lately, all I've seen you is like in the flesh, and this is so good That's to see true. you. <laughs> yeah, you know, I love you, man. Come on. Oh, so, oh. <laughs> like, so I appreciate you doing this with me. Uh, uh where my oh, so I didn't need to put my questions away. Now, if you don't mind to let the people yes. know a little bit about yourself, how long you've been doing comedy and acting, and um where you are, like where you're located geographically and also emotionally, where are you? The no. <laughs> What's your well, motivation? No. <laughs> my motivation. Let's start with how long I've been doing this. I started a long time ago uh, in acting. My first actual movie was uh, Forrest Gump with Tom Hanks. You're like, really? Yes. There's a scene where Tom is just given a anti-Vietnam uh, speech and he sees his girlfriend Jenny walking across in the pond. He's like, Jenny, Jenny! And he runs through the crowd and stops. When he stops right there, there I am. You'll see me smiling like, whoa. And so that's when I actually started, but it's like um, more than just a hobby at the time because I had a real job with the federal government, which was paying the bills and acting at the time, just something, you know, a hobby. And then once I started doing a little bit of acting, one day I was slightly intoxicated in a club in downtown DC. <laughs> uh-huh. I was celebrating my birthday with my sisters. And they're like, I bet you won't get up there and tell a joke. I was, you know, slightly intoxicated. Yeah. And that uh, liquor was telling me, yeah, you're funny going up there. <laughs> so I, I told a joke and I got the bug, I guess. And ever since then, I've been doing this for at least 20 years. Now, what kind of liquor was it? Just in case someone oh, else was looking for the courage. Actually, at the time, it was tequila. So, <laughs> so I'm just saying. Worm, no worm. Uh no, this is no, no worm. Okay. No, that came later. Okay, because I'm just no, this is for any young comedians that are looking for tips. I just try to, you know, wherever they can find information and wisdom. And <laughs> so oh yeah. Now, so I'm going to talk about your comedy style in a second. Okay. I, I, I want to mention, uh, well, first of all, why Frankie James is a pro, because you're li- on Facebook, it says Frank James, but Correct. everybody calls you Frankie. Good question. Good. Because um, I am an actor and I'm part of what we call the Screen Actors Guild, SAG. Right. S-A-G. And before I actually joined SAG, um, I was using the stage name Frankie J because I liked the way the sound and it gave me a persona that I like to like be. Right. So um, when I actually earned my SAG card, 
and I tried to use my real name, Frank James. Guess what they told me? There's already one out there. Frank. Exactly. So you can't use that name. So you should use a stage name. I already had one. It was Frankie. I've been using that as my uh, stage name and actor name ever since. Comedian Frankie J. On now, my... when did when did you start using um, five six five seven eight? I'm, I'm just five six eight. Five six. When did you start using that? <laughs> no, just <laughs> oh, day day one. I used that from day one. It was just an automatic generated. Uh, yeah. Yes. And I was like, I'll take that. And I've been using yeah. it ever since. And see, I when I first joined Facebook, I tried uh -huh. to go under my real. I, I, I first joined Facebook so that I could keep in touch with my mother because I moved to Florida. My uh -huh. wife and I had moved to Florida, and she was still living in Baltimore. And so I tried to go under my name, my regular name, so my wife, my wife, oh God, sorry, Freud, so that my mother. <laughs> oh, that's a good joke, man. Trying to trying to make it easy for my trying to you know when you got somebody old, you want things as simple as possible. And so I went to use my name, Glenn Fenderson. Yes. And there were 20 Glenn Fendersons. Now that had to be like Glenn oh, Fenderson, uh, like a string of characters behind it. There's no way my mother was going to. So I said, no, I've always signed, not always, but ever since high school, I was signing my checks and stuff, GD Fenderson. That was my. And they got cashed? <laughs> oh, no, no, oh, no, no, no. I just signed them. I never gave them to anybody. <laughs> you must be, you have me mixed up with Glenn Fenderson, who actually can sign a check that you can cash. GD Fenderson just signed checks that you can collect for posterity. <laughs> I hear you, bud. I hear you. Oh, so, so now just, no, so that's, that's GD Fenderson, but. Now, how long is your IMDb, and does Teresa get mad when you share it with other people? No, she does <laughs> not. She does not. And actually, my wife is very supportive of what I do. Uh, she lets me you know, go out and do crazy stuff. And she doesn't really give me a hard time about it, so I love her for that very much. And she likes that I'm out of the house anyway, so... Uh, so as long as the as long as the bills are paid and you keep and you're bills are quiet, yes. Yeah. As long as the bills are paid and you're not disturbing her happiness, then exactly yeah. everything is hunky dory at the uh, <laughs> James residence, as we say. <laughs> now, let's see here. The your style of comedy before we set up the clip, for the most part, is basically your. I like to, I like to refer to it as um, headlines to punchlines. Ah, you know. Oh, I like the way you said that. Ah, nice. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, so, that, that's, that's how I just that's how I think of it. You know, it's like you know, you get the headlines. It's not necessarily the whole news story because because sometimes the headlines themselves are very deceptive. You know. Yes. And, and especially when people don't read the story, so you get like the headline, exactly. a brief example, and then you do your comedy based on. A, a short synopsis of what's in the news. I mean, is that a fair is that a fair assessment? That's a, oh, actually, it's very accurate and right on, and exactly what you say. I try to take a current news story and I beat it to death. It's like a hammer, just beat it to death until a joke hopefully comes from that. And as you already know, I try to make it really edgy, so yes. it's your attention, basically, yes. yes. But also, now what also can do because, um, because I I don't know how far you're willing to go with some stories. Like I, with me, there are no limits. I, I will I will talk about anything, you know. Yes, anything. I know. <laughs> and so, it, like with the story with uh, Tyree. Um, now I'm drawing a blank. I'm drawing a blank because I don't know his last name. I, I just keep the, the young black gentlemen that um the five police officers were fired behind oh him. oh i can't remember his last name the retiree yes i'm talking about yes okay they, they yes. No, fired the fire first of all they, they fired those five officers right away so i assumed that they were black <laughs> <laughs> see, like, gd that is not right man see they were, well but, they fired them right away before, I, before yeah. the footage got released most of the time before they fire a cop they have to the, the footage has to come out 
and, and then it has to be like analyzed by nine different people mm -hmm. and and uh can you know, take a consensus that mm -hmm. yes that person really is dead we need nine more opinions yes they really were beaten we have yes we yeah that they okay we're gonna have to, well before we fire them let's put them on dust duty okay yeah okay uh, now okay oh well we can't have them in the building okay well let's put them on leave with pay oh well, we i was just that. making a point to my wife i'm just making that point says honey it's kind of odd because in any other situation mostly the police would be put on what we call administrative leave yes they'd be at home still getting their paycheck and it would take the press and lawsuits to get the actual footage out yes. of the police department but they say no we're gonna let you see this here it is matter of fact they're all fired and guess what they got they're arrested all black. today <laughs> see there's no racism they're all, all black i'm just up uh, okay you said that gd all i'm saying is in other cases the police officer would normally be on administrative leave right still with the hunting's having a good time talking about yo hey we're here have a good time and and also making maybe doing a speaking tour or along CPAC and stuff like that. Or whatever. I'm just saying. Yeah. You yeah. So how like so it, a story like that? Like I said, I wouldn't have a problem like going out tonight if I went out tonight and you know doing something about it. How long? Yeah. Something that sensitive. How long do you wait usually? If you wait. Sometimes I don't, and it's to my detriment. Unfortunately, because <laughs> <laughs> I remember. Uh, when unfortunately Mr. Pelosi got hit in the head with a hammer. Right. I didn't talk about that that night. I was very yes. tasteless, I admit. But it got a bunch of laughs on, on some moans. Like, oh, no, ooh, but laughs. Because I'm going to be honest with you, in my opinion, there's no subject off limits when it comes to comedy. It's comedy. Yes. Yes. Okay, I'm sorry. It's, this is how I see it. It's comedy. It's not meant to be hurtful or harmful or just trying to make levity or sometimes a very sad and serious situation. But, you know, sometimes it takes that, in my opinion. Yes. I mean, I, 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 I agree wholeheartedly. I, it, if, <laughs> I, it, if it, literally, if I am, if I am, well, I have done show, matter of fact, that was opening for a headliner, a nationally touring comic. And this mm -hmm. was like my shot to, you know, to, to shine for him. Mm -hmm. And ordinarily, you want to do your safest material, right? Yes. Your best stuff, your best stuff. And yeah. I did something brand new because it was, this was, uh, the, there was a shooting in California. I think that, I think the guy who did the shooting, his name was Jimmy Lamb, Asian guy. I think he worked mm -hmm. for like UPS um, ah. or FedEx. I don't know if you remember this or not, but it was, it was a mass shooting, uh, an Asian guy. And, and that's the first thing. That you just like wait a minute, an Asian guy, mass shooting, that's not right. That's not normal. That's, that's not normal. I agree. Right. So that's and so I did this. So I wrote my I wrote this, you know, my seven minute set that was opening up for this guy. Uh uh, I did my seven minute set on brand new material. I'm like, I'm writing it as like one day old. I ain't even I didn't even test it at an open mic. I'm mm -hmm. like, I'm right there. <laughs> for, and it he was he was um off stage cracking his butt up. I was just crack, cracking up, cracking up. It was like, and I, I covered the, the race angle, the, 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 the political angle, the, you know, every angle I could possibly cover, including the, the, the uh, uh, cause at the time uh, I was, I can't remember now cause it was a while ago, but there was like a, a slogan. Cause, oh, I know it's cause um, I said that he went postal and I said, we well, you know, so I'm sorry, that's not uh, postal, that's USPS. And actually it was UPS. So he went, who can brown shoot for you? Or something like that. I can't remember. Honestly, <laughs> oh, I have very dark humor. I like it. I think that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Now, oh, no. Now, what is the oldest, um, your, your oldest, your longest running news headline story that you have, you know, like something that you, it's almost no, it's no longer a news headline. Now it's just a joke. You know what I'm saying? So like, um, like say, for example, the accident when, um, um, Bruce Jenner, well, he wasn't Bruce oh, no. Jenner then when he had, is that car accident? I read from that's because that's one of the things here. Yes. Yes. As a matter of fact, in this, it had just happened. Right. It had just happened. 
And I'll be honest with you, sometimes you could probably reuse the same joke. Right. Although it's time lapsed and very, very, you know, old. Yes. But I try to stay away from that. You notice I have not used that joke again right. ever because I keep trying to make sure whatever the headline is, that's the joke of the day. I try to stay with that. But now, you're can right. you, sometimes you, you can't bring them back, but well, then you have to explain it because sometimes the joke is a little aged and the audience, you have to like carry them along like, okay, I remember that now and here's the landing of the joke. Sometimes it's worth it, sometimes not so much. Now, now can you, like, because this is, because one of the techniques I use, if I'm trying to resurrect something from the past like that, I mm -hmm. find similar things that are, like, up to date. And so you, like, and so you, like, so, so, like, we got, let's say, Harvey Weinstein. I'm just picking Harvey Weinstein, you know, we'll go, or, you know, you can actually work that um, from six, six degrees of separation, go back to Pee Wee Herman somehow. You see, ah. and that's, and that's way back. No. Way back, man. Right. You know, you can even like Pee Wee Herman and George Michaels. You know what I'm saying? Actually, I'm, I'm, I picked the wrong one. I said Harvey Weinstein, but I probably should have gone Louis C.K. Ah, yes. Yeah. Yes. So like if Louis C.K. shows up in your town, you can, you know, his descendants, you can like six, do six degrees of pecker, six degrees <laughs> of pecker abuse going all the way back to Paul Rubin <laughs> or Pee Wee Herman. <laughs> Pee Wee, oh, wow, man. See, exactly. Yeah, so, so so sometimes you can like take an old news story and like repackage it. Um, yes. And, and then yes, and then put it on sale like at the market where they like candy corn. Yes. yes. <laughs> thirty percent off. It's a thirty percent yes. off joke. Yes. Because thirty you aren't gonna get it. Um. Because <laughs> sometimes the stories are so old yes. that they will remember the story unless you sort of give them more details about right. the story. This. Yeah, yeah. It's like remember when Dick Cheney shot. Like you couldn't do a Dick Cheney shot his friend Harry in the face without because most people would be like, "Who's Dick Cheney? Remember, who's Dick Cheney again? Who's that?" Uh, yeah, I know Liz Cheney. Are they related? I know Liz. Oh yeah, yeah. So dad was he vice president? Yes. Yeah. Uh, he was actually the the Dark Emperor. <laughs> he was the Dark Emperor. He, he, yes, he was Palpatine <laughs> in the flesh. <laughs> <laughs> Palpatine in the flesh. We just didn't mention that. We'll talk about that in a sec. Okay. Palpatine in the flesh. Just bring that back when we talk about some things I've been doing lately uh, in my that. acting career, so to speak. I'm going to write it down phonetically because I don't know how Palpatine spells his name. And if I, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Palpatine. All right. It's like, is that a. Dishwashing detergent, Ovaltine and Palpatine. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, the first clip you you want can you do you know, remember where it was? You can tell us a little bit about it. Oh wow! You know uh, where was that? Uh, it was in Manassas, I think, at okay. a private function. If I do remember, I think it was Manassas. Okay. This is what I remember. So let's see. All right. Man, being a stand up comedian is a tough business. Sometimes I have to stand on a street corner and beg for money. <laughs> now, I can make a lot of money doing this because I have a very, very unique approach. Okay? Some of you may call my approach. Armed robbery? <laughs> That's right. I'm not looking for a handout. I'm looking for your hands up. <laughs> okay, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It's more like, hands up! It's like, I'm kidding, sir. It's a joke. He's like, oh, the black guy's gonna rob us in their damn well, no, we're not gonna rob you. It's, okay. <laughs> Man. On my way here, I drove through a black neighborhood in downtown D.C., duh, and I saw this homeless guy. He was sitting on a corner with a laptop, updating his Facebook stats. I was like, a homeless guy with a Facebook status? I'm thinking, that is so weird, because I didn't think you can get Wi-Fi at that location. Yeah. Yeah. So, he's 
everybody doing, doing good? Having a good time? Well, um, what's happening in the news? Uh, federal engineers have recently discovered that the Washington Monument had shrunk five inches. Yeah. To correct the problem, engineers plan to use a paint infused with Viagra. <laughs> Man. In America, in America, one out of five women are raped. The other four refuse to testify against Bill Cosby. <laughs> oh, man. Dude, I forgot about that. Oh, jeez. That brings back memories, man. What? <laughs> You're in the era of Bill Cosby. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. that is so, so stupid, man. That's because I I can. I, we was talking about lumping things together, and yeah, I I have a recent bit that I do. I talk about how well, I was talking about talking about COVID, and why it was easy for young people to break up, but older people stayed together. And the re reason the young people could break up is because all of their music and all of their pictures are on their phones, so they just grab it and go. But older people, we have albums, shit. Photo, we have photo albums and music albums that we have to divide up, you know. <laughs> so it's like, um, okay, this is Temptations is yours, uh, the Jacksons are mine. Oh, Michael Jackson, that's ooh, that's the third pile. So you have like three piles mine, yours, and the music that we're not allowed to listen to anymore. So we got Temptations, yours. Earth, Wind, and Fire is mine, and oh man, R, R. Kelly. Okay, that's this pile over here. So, <laughs> and that's so even things like that you can like um, bring back in. Like so you could like get R. Kelly. So you get R. Kelly, Michael Jackson, Bill Cosby. You know, oh, you get like Cosby, all the yeah. musical people that you know, you know. That's how that's how I lump things together. You know, just using. Well, never mind. That's beside the point. I don't even know why I brought. I brought it up because it was talking about something, maybe anything. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> we go back like to talk now that I see that clip again, yes, if I'm not mistaken, that was in Manassas at a uh, private function. I think it had maybe 75 or 80 people in there. And uh, because it was in Manassas, right. it was a totally white audience. Totally yeah, I, I, that I noticed, at least in the, in the shot. Yes. Yeah. So which brings me up to a point, because I remember I was at this other club in Manassas, again, mm -hmm. a white audience, and um, all the wait staff was white. So, of course, I'm the only black person in the entire building. So my opening joke was, OK, guys, stop messing around. Where do you guys hide all the black people? <laughs> <laughs> Cricket. Total. What did you just say? Oh, I'm thinking, I'm not living here alive. I'm not, I'm not living here alive. But I didn't get them back. I told some really silly jokes and got them back. That first joke was a no no. In yeah, that's, yeah, that's, yeah, there's sometimes, the sometimes day. you get that yeah. the first joke. It's, especially if it's something you really, really, really believe was going to be funny. Yeah, I thought it was. I thought I'm the only black guy in here. I can make fun of that. But no, not to them. And that was a while back, though. I was like uh, 20, 21. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Back in the 90s. So, is that, did you have hair then? Or, or when did oh, you, no. when, did, when did this become your, when did this become your look? <laughs> My look? Oh, when I was I hit uh, 50, I decided that's it. Oh, okay. I'm going to go, I must, you know, shave my head, basically. That was, that day, because I had uh, Widow's Peak. You know what that means? That oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, why fake? This, yeah, just shave it all off. N now that I've done that, I really like it. I really do. Now, does it make it easier as far as acting jobs go? Because people can actually put in their mind any kind of hairstyle they want on your head. That is true. So it's not exactly a problem. Um, Although I did run into this once or twice mm -hmm. on some productions where there was doing um, a era period of slavery 
they would say, you know, there was no skinned or bald men during slavery because they would not allow slaves to have, you know, razors. So right. you always had some hair. Right. You was never shaved. So right. sometimes they say, no, we can't use you for that. You want to put on a wig, maybe? Sure, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. It's like or I top yeah. to cover the skit hair. But sometimes that works because I would be a freed or you know educated slave, well dressed with a top hat in some scenes, which I do like. I do like era, you know, era pieces if that makes any sense. Yeah, yeah. Now I like for like this, I'm not cutting this for anybody. There's no of course, no, yes, it's yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah, so it was like if you did that, I wouldn't know who you look like. I wouldn't know who you were, man. I wouldn't know who I was. I would I would I would not let me in the house, I'd shoot me. <laughs> you know, get out. No. <laughs> now I'm not gonna ask uh now you are yo did I mention the palpatine? Ask you about the palpatine thing in the flesh now. Oh, uh, oh let me let me tell you about that. It's one of the projects um that I have been working on. Uh, for 2023, uh, um, it's a uh, new series called Lady in the Lake. Okay. And uh, yeah, and um, I can't tell you much about it because you know we sound in sign in NWA, so we can't discuss the plot or anything. But uh, look it up, Lady in the Lake, and it's. <laughs> It stars uh, Natalie Portman, Queen Amidala. Ah, there's the yeah. reference. And I had the chance to uh, work with her in a couple of scenes, and she is such a pleasant actress. I mean, adorable, very nice, fun to work with. I'll say that. That's all I can yeah. say for life. Yeah, Queen yeah. Amidala. And when I first saw her, I can at least say that. I was like, ah, Queen Amidala. She thought that was kind of, kind of. <laughs> and she was also in was it was it Black Swan or something? Black uh, Swan, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. One of, I think it was the first time I'd ever seen her do a dark role or dark ah, role. Ah, ah. We don't like this, so uh, just stay tuned for that. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Lady in the Lake. Now, being doing the, doing the news things, I. Can you have a fresh approach with George Santos? <laughs> <laughs> Man, I'm gonna be honest with you. I was at a comedy club last night, open mic, and that was one of my first jokes about uh, George Santos. Hi, I'm the Congressman from New York. I'm George Santos. Remember I told you guys that I was Jewish? Well, I'm also, as you can see, I am black-ish. Yes, I'm black-ish. I am a TV sitcom about black people. <laughs> and I'm drag-ish. And I am <laughs> drag-ish. <laughs> and see, to me, that was, the, I think the first thing I wrote about him was, um, it was the ish. I used the ish and something. Ish. I can't remember yes. what, yeah. Yeah, I can't remember what the, what it was, because I write for Politipod. Ah. And so, and also, I was doing a thing called critical joke theory. Just I took a break because of holidays. Um, but even with that, I was like writing like thirty jokes a week from the news. Oh wow! Outstanding. That gets that gets, but it, but it gets um, in your head where you like you're watching. You can't enjoy the news. You can't enjoy news just for news anymore. Every news has you know you have to look at it as a, a like work like punchline. You know. I'm a constant watcher of news 24-7, yes. because as you know, that's where I try to get my jokes from. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I even record C-SPAN. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay, see. That's deep. That that's deep. deep. Now, here's the funny thing, because like on social media, I'll post a... Mm -hmm. Okay. I post... Okay. I posted something today. Um, oh, I'm trying to remember it. Florida governor... DeSantis, uh, in keeping with 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 his state policies, in keeping mm -hmm. with his new state policies, 
has replaced Black History Month with the film 28 Days. <laughs> I like that. So, this one. <laughs> Hi, I'm Judy Fennison, certified forensic humorist and host of Dunaway Past Funny. You have just watched part one of our interview with actor and comedian Frank James. Please join us for part two and the rest of this story. And when you come back to join us, bring a friend.